Hi, and welcome back. We're continuing our discussion of Chapter 6, Applying Organic Chemistry, and this chapter dis, uh, deals, this part of the chapter deals with the discussion of nucleophiles and electrophiles. Most of the reactions that we're going to be looking at in this entire course, and even in the next semester of organic chemistry, deals with nucleophiles and electrophiles. So this is a very important topic. We're never going to get away from it. We're going to be dealing with it the whole time. And so we certainly need to identify what is a nucleophile and what is an electrophile, because those are going to be our players in our reactions, okay? So most of our reactions are going to be polar or ionic reactions, and they're going to involve ions as reactants, intermediates, and products, okay? For this, negative charges are going to be attracted to positive charges. So generally our negatives or our partial negatives are going to be reacting with our positive or our partial positive. So in other words, our electron rich species or negatively charged species are going to be attracted to our electron deficient species or positively charged species. So what we're looking at is where is our where are the regions of low electron density versus regions of high electron density? Those things are going to react together to give us our products, okay? So this carbon is electrophilic because the carbon has a partial positive because this chlorine is withdrawing electron density away from the carbon because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon, leaving a partial positive on the carbon, partial negative on the chlorine. So if we look at an electrostatic map or an electro, uh, electrostatic potential map of this molecule, we can see blue indicating a partial positive end of the molecule, kind of like a cold end, and a red indicating a partial negative end or, if you will, kind of a hot end of the molecule, okay? And on the right, we have something with an opposite configuration. So we have a carbon that's attached to a lithium. So in other words, lithium is more electropositive than carbon. It's going to be pushing electron density away from itself. Remember, lithium likes to give up an electron when it reacts, and so it likes to push electrons away. And so that's going to actually make this carbon partial negative and the lithium partial positive. You could even draw this as an ionic species with the carbon having a lone pair and a negative charge. And that's the way we'll generally draw it. And the lithium having a positive charge. This is because lithium generally forms ionic species. But if you consider it to be molecular, then you have this partial positive end with the blue and partial negative end with the red, okay? So this carbon on the right then is nucleophilic. It has a negative charge. It has a lone pair. The, par the carbon on the left is electrophilic. It, it wants electron density because it's electron poor. It has a partial positive charge. It's electrophilic. It wants electrons. The one on the right has a negative charge. It's nucleophilic. It wants to find a nucleus. Remember, nuclei I have positive charges, okay? So nucleophilic means it wants a nucleus. It, it wants a positive charge. The electrophilic carbon on the left wants electrons. It wants a negative charge because it has a positive charge, right? So let's see if we can identify nucleophiles and electrophiles. So nucleophiles are electron-rich species that can donate a pair of electrons. Nucleophiles are also Lewis bases. Remember, Lewis bases donate a pair of electrons. So if they're more, <clears throat> the more polarizable a nucleophile, the stronger the nucleophile. Meaning that if it has a kind of a fluffy atom, then it's more polarizable, then it's going to be a stronger nucleophile, and we'll look at that more in chapter 7. But here we have examples of regions of high electron density. So we have this partial negative here on the carbon with the lithium attached, okay? That's a nucleophilic carbon with this, uh, let's call these species A, B, C, and D, okay? So looking at A, we have this carbon that's having this electron from the lithium pushed down on it. So it essentially has gained that whole bond almost as a lone pair. And so that carbon has a lone pair and a negative charge, making it nucleophilic. 
If we look at species B, that's a thoxide, we have this oxygen has three lone pairs, so it has a huge amount of electron density around it, and it has a whole negative charge because it lost a hydrogen, and it has a lone pair, extra lone pair and negative charge versus a neutral species. If we look at C, we have a neutral oxygen where it has two bonds and two lone pairs, but C also has a high region of electron density on the oxygen because it has those two lone pairs, and it can also act as a nucleophile. D has a double bond between the two center carbons, and remember a double bond has the two electrons of that bond in p orbitals. Therefore, they can act as nucleophiles because we have this high region of electron density that extend beyond the uh, plane of the molecule. And that high region of electron density, even though it isn't fully negatively charged, can act as a nucleophile. So let's recap. We have a carbon in species A that is acting as a nucleophile because it has a partial negative. We have the oxygen in species B with an extra lone pair acting as a nucleophile. We have the oxygen in species C acting as a nucleophile because it has two lone pairs. And in species D we have the double bond that has two um, <clears throat> electrons in it, and so therefore those two electrons can act as a nucleophile. What does an electrophile look like? It's an electron deficient species and can accept a pair of electron electrons, making it a Lewis acid. So carbocations and partially positive atoms are electrophilic. So here we have a carbon, let's call these A and B. Here we have a carbon in species A that has a chlorine attached, so that chlorine is withdrawing electron density from the carbon, leaving the carbon with a partial positive and the chlorine with a partial negative. So that partial positive makes that carbon electrophilic. So for species B, we have a full positive charge on that carbon, and that's called a carbocation. That full positive charge makes that carbon electrophilic. It can accept a lone pair of electrons. So if we had the same, if we had nucleophiles and electrophiles existing within the same molecule, what would that look like? Let's label all of the nucleophilic and electrophilic sites on the following molecule. So you kind of have to just memorize the patterns for these, and we're going to see these patterns over and over it seems like a lot right now, but there really aren't that many, okay? There really isn't that much to it. So anywhere you have uh, something, some atom that has an extra lone pair of electrons, that generally can act as a nucleophile, as long as it's neutral or negatively charged, okay? So oxygen here is neutral, but it has two lone pairs of electrons, making it a nucleophile, okay? That's a nucleophilic center. All right. Um... This carbon here is double bonded to an oxygen, and we saw that we could draw a resonance structure for that, putting that lone pair up on the, uh, the bond as a lone pair up on the oxygen. So that leaves that carbon partial positive and the oxygen partial negative. So in fact, this could be a electrophilic center, and the oxygen can actually act as a nucleophile. We generally don't uh, study that type of oxygen as a nucleophile in this class, but it is possible. This nitrogen has a lone pair, so it can act as a nucleophile. I'll, I'll put a uh, capital E plus for electrophile, okay? So it can act as a nucleophile, okay? So we've got an oxygen here with a positive charge, okay? So Generally, what that's going to do is make this carbon here also positively charged, so we can draw a resonance structure, putting that oxygen, putting the pi bond as a lone pair on the oxygen, and leaving that carbon with a positive charge. So this carbon is, uh, let, me, let me write it, this carbon is an electrophile. And this oxygen here on the left, okay, has three lone pairs and a negative charge, so it act, can act as a nucleophile. 
And we can also draw a resonance structure for um, for this, putting that lone pair up on this carbon down here so it can also act as a nucleophile. This is kind of a tough problem though, so I've got some more problems in the next slide that are going to be a little bit more straightforward, I think. All right, so here's some examples of nucleophiles and electrophiles that we really do need to be able to identify. So um, I think the person who made this slide kind of went overboard with this strange structure up here that probably wouldn't actually exist. Um, so down here we can have inductive effects causing an um, a nucleophile, okay? So we have a carbon that's nucleophilic because it has an electropositive atom on it. So that's leaving it with a partial positive, okay? Um, we're going to see a couple of examples with that. We've got a carbon lithium here. Later on, we're going to see a carbon that has a magnesium bromide on it or magnesium chloride that's going to be also... Um, uh, also going to have... A, I'm sorry, a lone pair and a negative charge, okay? So next we have an oxygen or a sulfur with a couple of lone pairs on it. Next we can have a pi bond that has this region of electron density. Those are all nucleophiles that we need to be able to recognize. We're going to study these nucleophiles and electro electrophiles as we move through the course. And so we don't want to be too concerned with them right now. Just try to remember these simple examples right now. And we'll, we'll study more as we move through the course, okay? Next, we can have something that's withdrawing electron density from a carbon, like a chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and halogens generally are what does that. And so that's going to leave a partial positive on the carbon and partial negative on the chlorine, making that carbon electrophilic. Also, a carbocation leaves a, an empty p orbital, and so that's going to be electrophilic. So let's look at some examples and see if we can identify some nucleophilic centers in the following compounds. So remember a carbon attached to a lithium. Okay, that's going to be nucleophilic. I'm going to say nucleophile. And oxygen has two lone pairs on it, even though it's neutral, so that's nucleophilic. A nitrogen has a lone pair, so that's, if it's neutral, so that's nucleophilic, okay? This nitrogen has a lone pair, so that's nucleophilic. And this pi bond has two electrons, and so that has a high region of electron density, so that's nucleophilic. So all of these are the types of nucleophilic centers that you should be able to recognize right now. So a carbon attached to a lithium, okay, an oxygen with that's neutral with two lone pairs, a nitrogen with a lone pair, a nitrogen with a lone pair that's that's uh, you know neutral, um, and so also a pi bond, and also an oxygen that is negatively charged that also could be uh, a nucleophilic center. Some other nucleophiles that we're going to see are just the halogens when they're floating around. So chlorine bromine, fluorine, and iodine. Those can act as nucleophiles, and we'll study them in the next chapter, okay? Identify all electrophilic centers in the following molecules. So here we have arachidonic acid at the top, which is a precursor to some steroid hormones. So we can draw, uh, um, we can draw a resonance structure for this, leaving a partial positive here, partial negative here, so this is an electrophilic center. And we can do the same here, leaving a partial positive on this one. That's an electrophilic center. And don't forget, also a carbocation can be an electrophilic center, okay? Another electrophilic center is, um, say, that you need to rec recognize now, is an alkyl halide. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine can withdraw electron density, leaving a partial positive. So these are the electrophilic centers that you should be able to recognize now. A carbonyl, this is called a carbonyl, a carbon-oxygen double bond is called a carbonyl, leaving a partial positive on that carbon. Um, uh, an alkyl halide that has a cl uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine attached leaves a partial positive on the neighboring carbon, the, car the alpha carbon attached to the alkyl halide, 
and also a carbocation is an electrophile. So those are the kinds you should be able to recognize right now. Okay, in the next section, we're going to discuss mechanisms and arrow pushing.